can't see. Hi, everyone. Hope I'm audible. And hey, yes, you are. Great. Great to see you and great to be part of this amazing event. Thank you so much for all these beautiful, um, very, very highly enriching lineups that, that Anjali and Nishala created for, for this event. And I think I'm sure you're also finding it equally equally enriching and, uh, and, and very, very interesting. Um, let me first introduce my friend Mansi. Um, uh, Mansi, she is actually one of the pioneers in this whole parenting uh, world that we are now. So all, all of us, at least and at our career stage, so glued to. She's the founder and CEO of India's most trusted, and I would definitely use this word most trusted, discovery platform for parenting. Uh, she's apart from being the founder and CEO of this amazing platform that she is, she also runs a lot of podcasts, uh, a lot of uh, uh, a series of podcasts um, on Geo Seven, which I think a lot of us, whoever, whoever subscribes to that, find it again immensely useful. So I don't know. I think I can. Uh, when I was looking at her introduction, there is like you know I can just go on and on in terms of what Mansi has done and has been doing and will do. Uh, so I would just rather stop there and um, and speak a little about myself, which I will not take so long to do. Uh, I am actually heading HR for um, Alvarez and Marcel India Limited. It's one of the consulting firms, um, uh, uh, pretty old in, in uh, you know globally, about 40 years there. Uh, I myself come with about 17 years of experience in, in human resource. Have been heading or leading functions across uh, you know various consulting firms uh, before Alvarez and Marcel as well. Uh, so very very excited to be uh, hosting this show and uh, being in conversation with Mansi. Um, so let me thank let me quickly jump in. Um, thank you, Nimisha. And if I may add to Nimisha's introduction, she is a live wire at every event, every party. She's an amazing, uh, really, really helpful friend and the proud owner of a most beautiful house that I have ever seen. So that's thank you so much, Pansi. Yes, that's one of the passion that I have in terms of interior decoration and fashion designing. Um, so let me jump to you know what Anjali and you know Nishala they've all got us here together for, which is um, which is this talk about innovation on the go. And I actually when I saw your name, it, it, I found it quite apt because you were one of those people who started way back in 2013 uh, when parenting and you know having platforms for such kind of discussions was just unheard of. Must I mean maybe, maybe there were one or two or so, but. It was unheard of. It was quite an offbeat career, so you know, as such, to kind of go for. So, what made you do that? And you know, we would love to hear a little bit of a story around there. That why did you choose such an offbeat platform? You know, Namisha, I always feel that in life you always get two or three whispers until they become really, really loud noises in your head, right? For me, the first whisper was when I was, you know, in my last formal role, I used to head marketing and communications for French Connection UK and a lot of other premium and lifestyle brands. And, you know, I was traveling from Metro to Worley and um, I didn't look out of the window even once. I was constantly glued to my back in the day Blackberry. So that was the first whisper that life said that, listen, if you're spending up, spending about 60% of your waking up time in front of a digital device, why are you not communicating through that one? So that was the first whisper. The second was, you know, traveling, doing a backpacking trip with my then three-year-old uh, to the U.S. all alone without my husband, just with my sister. And, you know, every city I'd go to, I'd just plan, what do city in And, uh, you know, I was like, why does this not happen in India? So that was the second whisper. And the third one was actually a lot of push uh, and a lot of negative push from a lot of fellow moms and, um, and, and women which was I was constantly being judged because I had to work full time uh, back then because I had a housing loan, a student loan and multiple other loans in my life. And I had to continue to work full time. And it was being judged for being a full time working mom, thinking that I'm not adequate. They would not share with me because I was just waiting, not waiting outside play school or classes. And my mother in law was running those errands or things like that. And I was like, how does a working mom figure out? What to do with her child if she's not on these multiple, uh, you know, hangouts? And, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just couldn't be a part of it. Um, so I was like, how does one figure out? And I was like, Bus, this is it. The minute all the min the day I paid off all my debt, um, I put in my papers and uh, I had an army of people backing me up in terms of friends, family. So that was it. I think when you're extremely passionate, you find that need gap. And uh, as a founder, if you find that problem statement that you're trying to solve, um, I think innovation is just a word you're substituting for something you're really passionate about. 
but that's that's actually quite uh, interesting, uh, Mansi, and it actually takes us back to this age-old saying of um, you know, invention uh, necessity is the mother of invention because most Absolutely. of the time, just kind of things are telling us around us, and we are not taking the clues, and suddenly it's like you're hit by that need, and I said, yeah. okay, I'm gonna do this now. So very yeah. very true, at least in your case. But tell me, um, what are the uh, so one very, very relevant to the kind of work that you are doing, parenting, for example, is, is I see it evolving like anything, like how our parents brought us up vis-a-vis -vis how I, my sister who is about six years older to me is bringing up, you know, uh, or, or actually has brought up now, they're quite a kind of, you know, young kids now or girls now, brought up her kids. And now when I am doing it with my, it's so significantly different. I mean, maybe there is one common thread of the value system that we all still try to hold on to and want to kind of give the same values to our kids that we were brought up with. But other than that, I think the whole game is changed. And it's just, it's just changing every day, right? Yeah. How do we really, as working mothers especially, I mean, if you're a full-time uh, mom, at least you're at it all the time. You're aware, your antennas are up. You're not multi, I mean, you are multitasking, but parenting is like, you know, the core of a lot of things that we're doing. For us, who are like working mothers, we always feel that we are left behind. There's always somebody doing more and, you know, and we are feeling that you're just kind of trying to just be there, right? Yeah. Especially in this field. I mean, you know, we may excel everywhere else, but no matter how much you do, you never feel that you're excelling as a parent. Yeah. Um, so how do you really deal with this pressure of change and being relevant all the time? Yeah. So I think that's a very, very important question, Dimisha. And honestly, I think as a founder, uh, and this is for no matter whichever domain you work with, right? Make sure that as a founder, you surround yourself with a fort of Support and a good army, right? And that's the people that you work with, your team, right? In my case, I would be lying if I said it's easy. Uh, it's all me because that would be a lie. Uh, it's clearly an efficient and uh, really, really passionate number of people who work alongside. The second is you're absolutely right. There is, uh, you know, and, and now that I've been running this for the last eight years, there are a few common concerns and especially in our case, right, uh, in parenting, there will be constant milestones that um, a parent will hit and their searches will be common, right? Just different, it, just think of it like a tunnel between Bombay and Lonada and different cars are just passing through. That's literally what it is. Kids will teeth, kids will have diaper training issues, parents will feel inadequate of themselves. I don't know a single parent who thinks they're doing the best job in the world. That mom guilt exists and it will continue to exist no matter how much uh, we talk about it. So I think identify, for me, the, the conversation is always identifying perennial problems with a few topical ones. So you should have a balance between um, seasonal and perennial content. So I think in the content play, it really, really works. Um, second is, um, you know, just build a really strong fort around you with a great team to ensure that you're constantly um constantly innovating and you're up to speed with everything that's happening around you great i think uh, you made relevant points and just tying this up with with the kind of work that i am doing and i i thought maybe apart from this whole offbeat thing that you do a lot of us who are doing in this you know very typical corporate job especially in hr and i found a lot of hr professionals logging in and we're you know, part of this network as well um, maybe they would they would resonate with what you know what I'm saying right now is that one being in HR itself a lot of times the perception this function carries is that what is really the value add right yeah. so there's a, at least from and I can talk about myself there's immense amount of uh, pressure or just this whole prove a point sort of a thing in my head going that I need to constantly be very relevant to the organization constantly be very very innovative in my you know uh, value add or the contributions that i'm making for the organization and that kind of runs you know practically all the decisions or all the initiatives that i take that i don't want to be redundant i want to do something which really adds value and is innovative it's something that maybe they know the people in the business are not really thinking about so um so having said that i think that the whole the whole pressure of being you know relevant and being in the game uh, be a little bit of a clutter breaker all of that really helps a lot in in um, just just being you know maybe succeeding in what really you're doing at that moment um very typical question and i know you've de dealt with in some way or the other in one of the you know other discussions as well but do you often have to deal with a lot of judgments being a woman entrepreneur uh because mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, women and then entrepreneurship attached to it. Yes. So, mere liye to it is women, woman, then mom, and then entrepreneur, right? So, okay. if if you know, there's a term that has been carved called mom, mompreneur, right? right? So, uh, honestly, I think these are just labels that the world gives to you, and you give to yourself. In my case, it's worked brilliantly. I always believe make labels work in your favor brilliantly. Um, it's worked because of the domain one that I handle. Uh, I don't think. Um, you know if a man was doing it maybe uh, maybe uh, people would have taken it as seriously as when a woman is doing it because 9 out of 10 times the woman is the primary or the mom is the primary uh, caretaker and uh, that that is okay so i made it actually work in my favor and uh, you know when i started my venture i must tell you namesha my dad uh, told me this very very important line and he said um, you know life may kabhi bhi koi bhi problem aaye or you're second guessing yourself or people are telling you anything just remember this one line and i'll say it in hindi he said sabse bada ro hai kya kahenge log right um so so that is kind of stuck with me so i'm not somebody who really pays um attention or heed because i don't have the time to look up from what i want to do what i want to build uh, to worry about um and worry about what people think of me or the labels that they may want to give to me right and and coming to your earlier point of um, you know being being relevant or you know uh, carving out time for yourself or staying relevant i think one of the the biggest takeaways for me has been that you know as entrepreneurs we get so bogged down we think being busy being back to back meetings calls etc is very very important we are really glorified ceos i mean really glorified clerks in many ways so for me to stay relevant was what was most important was carving that uh, one one a uh, week uh, one day in a week which i would actually do the creative uh, part of work and and you know that i've actually made you juggle some meetings and sessions around because i said i don't take meetings on that day or sessions on that day so that has really helped me uh, think from a consumer lens think what my consumer needs and stay relevant to uh, okay we uh, have the last minute now mansi so uh, parting thought tell us that very concise in a way The secret sauce for for those who are just sitting on the edge, on the fence, wanting to start something and they are not yet. Um, ready is a lie. You're going to never be ready. So make sure that um, you, when you feel, when you're very very passionate about something, don't hold yourself back. Just go ahead and uh, do it. Um, remember the banana peel approach, which is make mistakes. It's inevitable. But when you when you hurt your backside after falling on a banana peel. remember the feeling of being hurt and don't make the same mistake again uh, the third one would be the ladder approach which is you're never going to be able to be um, at at the highest point on two or three or four different ladders so make sure that you hire for your weaknesses if you're up there in some field and not up there in some field hire for your weaknesses uh, that's that's very important and everything to sum it up uh, which i always use is everything is a choice so be ready that you're going to pay a price for it is it a price you're okay to pay you're not okay to pay uh, but everything in life is a choice and and you go ahead and make yours amazing great and i would just add one last point to that is that for me i think what has really helped is being fearless um yeah. uh, and i think you if you're just being fearless and very sure of what you're doing what i'm making up with the choice that you know point that you made um i think there's no one stopping you you know that is yeah. really me in my head and in my mind So thank you yeah. so much, Mansi, for the wonderful conversation. And uh, over to Anjali and Nishchala.